Ugh. God, it's hot. Well, it finally happened. I'm on injured reserve. Now, by the time we're watching this, it's probably like week three, four. Hey, you don't leave that alone. Leave that alone. By the time we're watching this, it's probably like week three or four. It's hot, bro. It's, it's Texas. It's about 90 something degrees, but it's humid. It's disgusting. Here we are, bro. Shout out BLS for the shirt, bro. It, it's fitting for this situation. So what happened? I tore my Achilles and not just like a, a small baby tear or partial tear. It's torn, torn. I'm talking four centimeter gap. Now, for those of y'all who use like, what is it? What do we use here in Texas, America, metric system, whatever. It's an inch and a half gap. So um, that'll be Friday, July 5th. I have the surgery to repair it. So Friday, I have the surgery to repair it. It should be interesting. Apparently it's only like a 30 minute procedure. So I'll be in and out pretty quick. Um, I'll pick up my prescriptions and then I'll head back home to recover. Then I'll be off the court for the next like six months, six months till I'm on the court. I can shoot around and stuff like that. And then about nine, 10 months till I'm able to play in some pickup games and things like that. What happened? Uh, here's a full story. So I go to San Marcos, Texas, about like 15 minutes away from where I live to go play some pickup games with friends. Let me adjust the mic. So we finished about the third game. Uh, first game was like a warm up game, half court. Second game was a full court. Third game was full court. Right as I'm finishing game three, I felt good the entire time. Right as I'm finishing game three, I'm walking off the court to go get my water. And what happens? I thought someone kicked me in the leg. Apparently no one kicked me in the leg. I really thought someone was mad that I was frying them. So I thought someone kicked the ball at my calf or like kicked me in the calf. No one was standing there. There was no one there. Everyone had walked away already. And I was like, oh man. And my foot started feeling weird. And I was like, oh my God. I automatically knew. Like I, I wanted to be a physical trainer, sports therapist. I did take a little sports medicine in the high school. I helped with the athletic trainer. So I, I knew automatically. I'm like, dude, I just tore my Achilles in a pickup game. That's neither here nor there. I went to sit down. Um, they have like the light post. So I sat on the concrete and stretched my leg out. And I was like, I'm not going to flex the foot. So, Cause it, it could make the gap bigger if you end up like stretching and flexing the foot. So I, I didn't do that. I went and sat down and started massaging my calf and it, it felt a little more jello-ish compared to my left. My left calf is like, it's still firm because of it. The left felt like jello. I felt the, the space where my Achilles should be and it felt like there was a small divot in it. It felt like jelly a little bit. I had my brother with me. He came with me to play pickup. And I was like, bruh, I drove here. It's my right foot, so I can't drive back. So I had to call my dad. I called my dad before I called my mom and wife, to be honest. <laughs> I called my dad to go pick to come get my brother. And he brought my mom and sister. My mom drove my car and we went to the ER. So I happened to be where I worked too, so it was a little bit easier. When I got there, I kind of already knew. They put me in a splint, they ultrasound, x-ray, all that. And they're like, yeah, there's some abnormalities there. And so I, I talked to my doctor, it was the 24th. I talked to him the, uh, Monday the 24th, just to outline the timeline. And he's like, I don't feel a gap. So it's up to you if you want to do surgery or not, right? I did all my research, non-surgical versus surgical. It, you can get to the same level of performance. Only thing is with non-surgical on the off chance, normally you're, if they do surgery, they pull it together. The tendon will like, like venom, the symbiote, it'll grow back together like this. And it'll technically be stronger because you have those sutures in there too. Non-surgical, there's an off chance where it can heal like this, right? Less points of contact. And then you end up with a, a weakened tendon. So I was like, okay, let me see how far the gap is. And I'll decide from there. Four centimeters is an inch and a half. I'm not playing with an inch and a half of the gap. That's scary. So I decided to opt for surgery. Now you can do what you want to do. I'm choosing the surgery. I get it Friday. It's a really quick procedure. It's like 30 minutes. I read some more on the notes. Apparently it's from chronic ankle sprain, but I've only sprained my right ankle twice, once or twice. First time was like, I was in high school. Second time I landed on my brother's foot. So I think it was just a combination of those two injuries, like damaging the Achilles a little bit. Oh, actually, now that I think about it, when COVID first started and we used to use the back porch as like a mini court, you know, I remember those days. 
when I had skidded and crunched my Achilles, I think that added up to it too. I'll put in the clip if I can find it. So yeah, that's what happened. I'm getting the surgery Friday. And then from there, I'll be part of Journey to the Drop Off is not only going to be like the 1v1s, the 5v5s, when I can go back to that, it won't be that long. Like time flies fast. It's already been a month since this happened. Time flies fast. <clears throat> this is where I shamelessly plug my discount code, Chris Can Hoop at in the lab.tv. Get your silent ball because I'm going to be using that a lot indoors to practice my handle while I'm down. Um, so I won't be able to like pretty much stand on both feet for like the next month and a half. So the, the question of how Journey to the Drop Off is going to continue. So you'll get video one, video prime. It'll be the preview to the 1v1. Video one will be week one interview of like outlining what the everything's about. Video two will be the first 1v1. It's mic'd up 1v1 on the channel. And then the third video will start this recovery process, which will be documenting physical therapy, post-op, and then like getting back to basketball shape, the workouts I do, all that. And then going back, analyzing old footage and seeing where I can improve, that's gonna be there too. Yes, yes, Bella. I'll put you in here too. Um, it'll be all of that. Other thing, what are you doing, bro? I'm like inquisitive. Um, so that's how the series will continue. I know we normally don't do this on the channel, but the outfit today, it kind of describes the journey I'm going to be on. Kobe tore his something terrible when he was playing on the Lakers about 10 years ago. Something terrible. It was terrible. Like he was trying to pull his tendon back down. I didn't have that issue. I think it's just the sheathing around the tendon that's ripped because I can still feel tendon there unless that's like blood or whatever that's solidified but hopefully not but I remember when it happened to Kobe I was like dang he'd be out for a year but he you know, you'll never quite be the same because mentally even if you get back to that strength point performance point after the year or two the mental portion is the part I want to document as well because every time I've injured myself it's taken me about like six months after injury and after being able to play again to kind of get rid of that mental barrier of hey don't don't push it before you hurt yourself so that's going to be the part that's that's documented the most is like the mental how i'm feeling i document up until really the whole process and just see how it goes from there it's going to be interesting to say the least um that's that's what the shorts they're the mamba the black shorts with the paisley design has 24 and 8 on the sides on the mamba across the front the shirt, shout out BLS, bro, Brandon. The the never be defeated has really become my motif, my motto through this whole injury process and like basketball in general. Sign me as a, as a featured athlete, that'd be cool. I'll be a model and your featured athlete. Never be defeated, this is part of the, the Call Man Wins collection. And it really, it's it, those words ring true because uh, the Call Man will win. Those who are usually the loudest have the most to try to prove whether or not it's secure within themselves. I know I'm pretty good at basketball and I know I'm a great athlete in general. So the calm man wins represents that because y'all notice I really don't trash talk much. And if I do, it's just to friends because I don't have anything to prove to y'all. <laughs> and in all honesty, like the calm man wins. If you can stay calm under pressure in tense situations, you usually come out on top all the time. So shout out BLS, shout out to never be defeated. I don't want to say gang because it's not really gang, but never be defeated. Shout out the brand, bro. Shout out and we'll see how this goes. So that's just kind of a story of how everything's gone down and where I'm at. This will be like video three. And then from here on out, it'll be the recovery and reactions. and things. See how it goes, bro. Let me get these crutches and get up out of here, man.